Welcome back. This is Nadine Craft with more Corpse Party. Our work is select paintings. so much. <sighs> You're an idiot, Koito. I don't believe with all your heart that we'll never get rescued. I thought we were friends. Custodian's closet. The door is affixed in the wall like a decoration and won't open. The erratic noise of that TV static coming from within. Crystal windows and doors that's on the screen. Can't fool them, move them, can't open them, can't break them, can't bust them down. Anything that doesn't lead outside the school, though, like the hall windows and the classrooms, can be affected to some extent or another. Second, just as some people are inherently good or bad-natured, some of the ghosts in here are good and while others are quite nasty. The more kind and gentle spirits shed a pale blue light, while the less savory types appear in blood red and glow like fire. Sure, it won't budge in the slightest. <coughs> Basement, the door is nailed shut. It definitely won't be open anytime soon. Do not under enter under any circumstances. The head is splitting. It's unbearable. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. When we found Izuha's body, I saw a black shadow, but I didn't tell anyone about it. And now it's killed them all. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. Oh, after the text is obscured by a thick layer of dried blood. Lab, the door seems almost like a model is sculpted onto the wall. There's no way of opening it. Mm. 
Middle School Brotherhood Senior High School, Class 3, Section A, G. Name tag required. The American Liver No luck with that. Is there anything else I need to do? There's an old journal on the desk. At least it appears to be a journal. In reality, it's more like a model fused to the desk surface. It can't be lifted and the pages can't be turned. There's a lamp on the desk, but it doesn't seem to work. Flipping the switches does nothing. Wash your hands with soap. Yeah, chemical diving with your body tectum. While looking closely, it seems to be painted over each of the organs with actual blood. I do not know where to go.
Oh, there's a ghost. Pile of haphazard with strewn human bones heaped on upon the floor. Upon further examination, student ID tag can be seen jutting from one side. Sasha Shino Nomi. There's a couple pieces of paper on the ground there. God will surely save me. Oh, the restroom scene. I remember this scene. This is the boys' restroom. This is a bucket. This is the girls' restroom. Shut that goddamn door. What the hell was that? <laughs> that was either an actual voice or an auditory hallucination. I really don't know which is more likely. Smell of ammonia is almost staggering here. Ew. There's ammonia in urine. That's nice. Not a drop of water emerges from the faucet. Hey, Naomi. Do you have any of that ass medicine on you? If I had a chance, you know, the smeary stuff. What, again? Yep, my butt's been drier in the desert since we got here. Well, I got some antibacterial cream if that'll work. Thanks, I'm gonna go butter up and cooper with it real good. Oh my god. Ass cream. Yay! <laughs> Yay, ass cream. Do you have any shame at all? Just making sure you're here. Making sure you're okay. In this haunted place. Seiko. Mm -hmm. Ah, nothing. Just checking. Sure you're here. It's good to check. The drain is completely stopped with long strands of black hair. The basin is filled with dirty water. That's comforting. The faucet makes an unpleasant sound of clanging pipes from the handle is turned, but no water comes out. There's a clump of 
unidentifiable meat inside the rusted bucket, completely crawling with maggots. Sorry for the wait. Thanks for the cream cutter there. Uh, no problem. Hey, wait. Was that stall open? Mm -hmm. I thought that stall was locked when we were in here before. Was it? I didn't have any trouble getting in. Fine, I guess I'll let you off the hook. We have bigger things to worry about, after all. I actually just heard Yuka's voice out in the hallway. I think it was coming from downstairs. Really, let's go check it out. Right. Problem. I'm just glad you didn't fall. Seems like you sprained your ankle pretty badly. Though we should find you some place to sit down and rest. Yeah, you're probably right. You're leaning on my shoulder for the time being. Thanks. I owe you one, Seiko. Think nothing of it. Stepped in it. Yeah, you can hear that. We've got some tissues, maybe you can wipe it off. Oh, these, these are definitely somebody's guts. And when I stepped on whatever part of their body I stepped on, I made a squishy sound. I think I just plopped my shoe into a juicy pile of dog poop. Oh god, that's way too much information. You're gonna make me puke. Suicide. I expected the beds to be a lot dustier. They're surprisingly clean, that's good though. Now you can finally rest your room and bones and it'll be. Yeah, I think I'm going to lie down for a bit. All tucked away in the corner like that. I've always preferred nooks and corners. They just make me feel safe, I guess. Ahaha, <laughs> I know just what you mean. I'm the exact same way. I wonder if there's anything in here we can use to soothe that ankle of yours. Sit tight now, me. I'm gonna take a look. Okay, thanks a bunch. Don't thank me yet, I haven't done anything. Sigh. Ah, this will do nicely. <laughs> Gotta make sure it splints and bandages. That sprain's a goner, no one still. Oh man, you're a lifesaver. 
Alright, you're wrapped up tight. How's it feel? Mm, feels great, Seiko. Thank you. You're very welcome. I sprained my ankle pretty badly before, too, so I know just how you feel. I wish I had some ice or something to put on it, though. No worries. You've done more than enough already. Er, you're asleep now? That's... Well, fair enough, I guess. Glad you agree. <laughs> it's slumberland for me. You really are an oddball, you know that? So, hey, hey, Naomi. If you find Mochida, have you thought about what you want to do with him? Eh? Well, you know, what they say when two people are faced with difficult situations, shall we say, it often leads to love, sweet love. You should well up all your courage and confess your feelings to him. You get all girly with him in this creepy place and your cuteness factor will grow three sizes in his eyes, I bet. Snork. I swear with you around, I almost feel like we're just shooting the breeze back at school, like nothing ever happened. Uh -huh. Thanks for your advice. I'll think about it. Eh. I hope we find him soon. Uh huh. You kinda don't, though, do you? You're thinking about how you wish he didn't have to put through all of this. Be put through all this. You want to see him, but you wish you could rest easy knowing that he's safe and sound back home rather than wandering around here. Am I right? Must be those maternal instincts of yours kicking in, huh? You're a deep one, to be sure. She may sound like an idiot, but she's right on all counts. Guess there's no fooling sake, huh? I've been pretty curt with her since we got here. I'll have to make sure I apologize later. Mm, gasp. Go. And what was that exactly? Hey, sorry, it's just that when I see dad ass of yours, I start to drool. What the fuck? You are so weird. Big brother sob sob, was that Yuka again? That was Yuka again. I heard it too. I'll go take a look. You stay here and rest, okay? I'll be back in a jiffy. I don't think that's such a good idea. I should go too. I insist. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Just keep that ass parked on that bed. You got it? Well, but look, your ankle's all dressed and feeling better, right? Don't make it all for nothing. Alright, I guess I'll stay here. Mm, my ankle really does feel a lot better. Seiko has definitely a knack for caretaking. Sigh. Mizui and the others. Satoshi, I wonder what they're all doing right now. Rumble, rumble. I gotta say, that was a pretty impressive reaction. Who ever heard of a class representative with such a sadistic streak? Who ever heard of a boy who can hit a note like that when he screams? He saved me. Hehe. <laughs> Don't be an ass, Yoshiki. Okay, okay, let's not have any fighting. I have to admit, though, his reaction was awfully cute. Oof. I just want to see him. 
Why did this have to happen? Why is the door locked? On closer inspection, there's no visible bolt keeping the door closed, nor any other evidence that it's been locked at all. What, but if it's not locked, then why won't it open? Eee, ha 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 ha. Are those children? Oh, that's creepy. Ooh, what? Let's all go on a field trip for summer vacation. head hurts so bad. I can't stop this ringing in my ears. The door is lattice with countless strands of black hair rooting in its place. It's someone there. It sounds like ballpoint pen scribbling away on a sheet of paper. are so misshapen and inconsistent, however, that they're completely illegible. It's no use. Where did this hair come from? God help me. Try using a match to burn the hair. The flame wasn't strong enough to do any significant damage. Okay. 
gun and I'll swish. Cough, cough. What's happening? I should have gotten the alcohol. I wasn't strong enough to do anything. Hastily splashing alcohol all along the edges of the door, Naomi lit Naomi lit a match in an attempt to burn through the seemingly endless strands of hair. The size of a ocean of wept and foul smelling heat, the hair lifted up and hardened fell away, freezing, freeing the door and allowing it to open. Pattern. 
Tell me what happened. Are you okay? Sick. I'm sorry for the mess. What are you talking about? Don't apologize for barfing, you poor girl. Belch. Everything's okay. You'll feel better now that it's out of your system. You need me to rub your back? I think I'll be fine. Thanks, though. Did you find Yuka? Uh-huh. Uh-uh. -uh. Looks like we're the only two people here. The only two living people anyway. This place is just way too quiet. How about you, Naomi? Is your leg any better? Are you okay to be up and about? While I was resting, I was suddenly attacked by this creepy black apparition thing. What, oh my god, are you alright? I think so. We should consider that room off limits from, now, from here on out, though. That's fine, I'm just glad you're okay. I guess we better keep moving then. Can you stand? Yeah. But where are we supposed to go? Hmm, well, we've already been pretty much everywhere we can go in the godforsaken school. And the only other people we've come across are all dead. Damn it. There I go again. It's hopeless. We're finished. I'm so tired. I'm making like a child again. No, I mean, come on, it's not that bad. We'll figure something out. Class 2 Niners ne say, never say die, right? We're invincible. We got a hairdresser's appointment first thing in the morning tomorrow, and I intend to keep it. And then in the afternoon, what say you and I go to our bike, get our bikes fixed? Sounds like a plan, right? If we make it back alive, sure. This is Seiko, what am I doing? I just can't seem to hold back. No way, are you like super duper tired or something? This is so not like you. Come on, raise that chin. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. <laughs> the hell's got you so chipper? Uh, hmm. You just keep smiling and laughing. Do, do I? Tell me how long is this is that going to last if it turns out we can never go home again? Have you given that any thought at all? We'll figure something out. That's a crock and you know it. I must have finally cracked under the pressure. This whole situation was just more than my soul could bear. I thought I'd be keeping Seiko's spirits up till the bitter end. I just thought that I was berating her, abusing her. All I had running through my head was pain and sadness. It was like a baby throwing me hissy fit. I was crying irrationally and couldn't stop. Venomous words were flowing from my mouth as if someone had turned on a spigot, and all I could do was moan complainingly little. I really was behaving just like a spoiled little brat. I'm sure our families are going to be really worried about us. They're going to search and search, but they'll never find us. It'll be a terrible burden for them. I'm wrong. How so? about it being a burden. When you lose a loved one, you cherish that person's memory. It's never a burden. You just want to do whatever you can, whatever you can to make her proud. You just want to, so you do. What is wrong with me? Seiko's mom disappeared several years ago. I know that, so why am I putting her through all this grief? 
That's how I think the people we leave behind are going to feel. I don't know how it is for you and your family, but normal people don't work that way. Now we... Sorry, how about we split up? We can cover more ground that way. Maybe find a clue to help get us out of here. Seems the most efficient plan of attack, don't you think? Cool. Who says things like that? I have to apologize. I want to get home as much as you do. Back to my dad and you and everybody else. And I sure as hell don't want to make them worry about me. This is all my fault. I have to apologize. Most of all, I don't want you of all people to speak to me like that. So I am sorry. I am sorry too. But it's okay. That's what you think we should do. Then no, let's split up. We'll go this way. is wrong with me. I couldn't even manage to say the word sorry. And so, in this nexus of close spaces where humans are scattered and imprisoned and killed, two friends who should have been thankful just for the small favor of being trapped together in this unforgiving place, were quickly and easily divided. My petty obstinacy towards Seiko would come to be the biggest regret of my life as the consequences of that heated exchange were far more dire than I ever could have imagined. Sob, wail, now we knew that jerk. I think I just heard somebody calling out. Oh, the voice. That was the first time I know. since I got here just kept growing stronger and stronger. I felt like something else was in my head. Like I was under some alien influence. In my mentally distraught state, I ran all through the building, frantically searching for Seiko. I just kept calling her name over and over again. When I finally came back to my senses, I found myself standing in the third floor hallway. Is that you? The stall door is locked from the inside. Someone's definitely in there. Gasp. Say 
it go? No. Why? Why? No, no. Seiko, so hold on, I'll get you down. Might be able to use this as a footstool. Well, this is so revolting, but if it saves Seiko. A significant number of maggots have found their way out of Naoi's hand and skirt. Required filthy bucket. Say, call him right here. The filthy bucket fell from Naomi's hands. With blank eyes, Seiko swung back and forth slowly in her noose. All life had been completely drained from her face. Say something. Oh, uh, say go. I want to apologize to you for what I said. Up until just a few hours before I was life in the plane and school and best friend. And here she was right in front of me. In front of my eyes, life was spinning through. Nothing that possibly except for this reality. I can't believe this is real. I refuse to accept it. This can't happen. I'm too big in chapter 2. credits if you like. Chapter 2 I will do in my next video. Chapter 1, A Gentleman's Errand, is now available to play. We'll do the extras later, after I finish the story. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.